from the great state of Kansas. Uh, thank you all for, for being here today. I really appreciate uh, hearing from all of you. And um, I'm going to start off just kind of, uh, Mr. Willis, I'll probably direct the only question I get to, to you. Um, one, I, I'm, I'm coming from a state where we just elected a new governor in Laura Kelly, who in our state of the state came, came out immediately with her priority of investing in infrastructure, whether it's roads, bridges, our um, air system. And the highway, highway trust fund is something that uh, literally everybody on the last panel talked about. Um, it, it's prevalent in all of the in all of the testimonies. So I appreciate all of you um, continuing to bring that up. I think that it's going to be important as we move forward here. Um, one of the things, though, that I want to kind of shift to, although in in the Kansas City metro area, in my district, um, in Johnson County and Wyandotte County, we have the U.S. 69 corridor, which is um, in definitely in need. Secretary Chow came out and and uh, looked at that. We've got a North Loop project near in Wyandotte County, and um, all of these things will benefit from us addressing the highway trust fund issues. Um, but you literally just touched on the thing that I've been thinking a lot about, which is the effects of the, of the shutdown and what it brought to light in terms of what we need to be thinking about and investing in. Uh, particularly, I'm concerned about the air traffic controllers. Um, I went out to, uh, we have the, in, in, we have the, in Olathe, we have a, a regional air traffic control center. And uh, I'm particularly concerned about our pipeline of, um, an ability to not only attract but retain and maintain a workforce. And can you talk a little bit about the importance of um, their, the air traffic controllers are, are organized um, and I would love to hear a bit from you about the importance that you see there and how that's gonna help us uh, attract and maintain people as we move forward. Well, thank you, and, and it's a great question. Uh, the, the, air, the, the staffing crisis that air traffic controllers are facing was really exasperated by the shutdown and the fact that the training facility uh, we know, went dark for 35 days. Right now across the country, 18% uh, of certified eligible, certified air traffic controllers uh, are eligible for retirement. Uh, that number goes up considerably when you look at some of the high traffic areas uh, in New York um, and, and elsewhere. So. You know, you start shutting down the government, you start withholding pay from these workers, it gives them a, a real added uh, incentive to walk out the door. So you, you have a staffing crisis today, you see those people hit, the, hit the, re, you know, the retire button, and you've got a real problem. And by the way, and it's not just limited for controllers, we have FAA inspectors, which is a critical component of the FAA. These are the people that go out, uh, inspect airlines, pilots, uh, aircraft repair stations, both, both in this country and abroad. They have a staffing crisis as well. And of course, screeners, we saw, uh, you know, by, by some estimates, 1,800 people leave during the shutdown. And quite frankly, they've got trouble staffing up on normal uh, days. So it really set us back uh, on those categories and, and other. Uh, that problem would exist in any event, but again, the shutdown really highlighted it and, and exasperated it. As a follow-up, can you talk a little bit about whether, I suppose the importance of having an association being able to be organized in attracting or maintaining employees, uh, losing 1,800 1, people uh, that quickly, in that's just one um, sector that you were talking about. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. The, just to be clear, the 1,800 was the screeners represented by AFGE. You're right. The air traffic controllers are, are represented by, by NATCA um, and the FAA inspectors by uh, another union called PASS. But yes, NATCA is very active in trying to recruit um, air traffic controls, trying to work with the FAA to make sure that that training program gets back up and running. Uh, that, you know, probably their number one focus in addition to making sure that their, their members are getting paid. So the, yes, the union is very involved in making sure that we have a, a steady stream of qualified controllers going through the school or otherwise getting into those positions. Because it can take a long time, not only for the training, but for the high traffic places. You can't just go in there from the schools. You have to have experience elsewhere. So it is, it's a process that the unions are very involved with. 
Thank you.